Let's construct a rational function now with these conditions. We have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 3. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4. And we have the following two intercepts. Now in the last problem we started with our vertical asymptote. And in this case the vertical asymptote tells us that we should have a factor of x plus 4 in the denominator. So, okay, we can start constructing our function down here. We need an x plus 4 in our denominator. Now, how do we get an x-intercept? Well, the x-intercepts are typically going to come from the numerator. You can look at the last video for a little bit more of a description. But the point negative 1 third 0 is going to appear on a function if somewhere in the function in the numerator there is a factor of x plus 1 third. Now, typically, we have a tendency to write that in a different form. We're allowed to multiply any of these factors by whatever numbers we want. And if we want to get rid of our fraction, we can multiply this factor by 3. And that would give us a factor of 3x plus 1. You'll notice that if we put a 3x plus 1 in our numerator, it's still the case that if we plug in x equals negative 1 third for x, we get 0 in the numerator and therefore 0 for the whole function. Okay, cool. So our vertical asymptote gave us a factor in the denominator. Our zero, or our x-intercept, gave us a factor in the numerator. I'm going to delete these parentheses here. Now, what else can actually be changed with this function while still keeping the vertical asymptote that we want and the zero that we want? All we really have left that we're allowed to change with this function is to just multiply it by some constant. So. I'm just going to put a constant in here. Now, this constant does not change the fact that we have a 0 at negative 1 third, and it doesn't change the fact that we still have an asymptote of x equals negative 4. What it does allow us to do is potentially change what the y-intercept is or what this horizontal asymptote is. Let's look at this y-intercept first. Let's see what happens to this function if we plug in x equals 0. Okay, we still have an a outside, and we have 0 plus 1 over 0 plus 4 on the inside, which is 1 fourth times a. Now, what does our y value need to be when we plug in x equals 0? It has to be negative 1 fourth. So, whatever value we get here, it better be equal to negative 1 fourth. And this immediately tells us that a has to be negative 1. Now, what does that mean for our function? Well, our function just has to have a negative 1 on it. I said a has to be negative 1. I just put it right there. And our new function, which still has the same x-intercept and it still has the same vertical asymptote, now has a y-intercept of 0 negative 1 fourth. Now we really have nothing left at our disposal to change here, so it better be the case that our horizontal asymptote of this function here is negative 3. Let's take a limit as x goes to infinity of our function. Well you'll notice that we get infinity in the numerator and infinity in the denominator. So what we typically do is we divide every single term by x to the highest power that appears in the rational function. We can simplify a bit, and we get the limit as x goes to infinity of this thing right here. And if we take this limit, you'll notice that these two terms go to 0, and we just get negative 3 over 1, which is, thank goodness, negative 3. So we constructed a rational function, a ratio of polynomial functions, that has a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4 because of this denominator. It has a 0 of negative 1 third 0 because of the numerator. And because of the negative sign that we put in front, plugging in x equals 0 now gives us negative 1 fourth, which is what we needed. And taking a limit as x goes to infinity or checking the horizontal asymptote gives us the negative 3 that we wanted. Okay, good job.